name is A.L. Kaplan. I write science fiction, fantasy, and poetry. Today I'll be reading an excerpt from my latest book, Hummingbird, A Star Touch Story. Hummingbird is a standalone short story that takes place after the, the events of my novel, Star Touched. I've also published several other short stories, including Wolf Dawn. This reading is for the Right Woman Book Fest 2021. You can get information about more events, as well as shop for books and poetry by women authors at www.therightwomenbookfest.org. Hummingbird. Day one. My once comforting home now feels like a prison. This place has become so cramped, there's barely room to move. I stretch, pressing against the firm confines, but find no relief. The enclosure is stifling, unbearable. In the distance, tapping sounds echo. They awaken a need to move, to escape. I fling my head back and bang into the wall. Vibrations from the contact startle me, but I must get out. Numerous tries elicit a small crack that bolsters a renewed surge of energy. After an eternity of chipping, a section begins to give. Then a piece falls away. An intense glare streams in, and I huddle away from it inside my shell. It hurts, even with my eyelids closed. Doubt flickers. Perhaps in here is better than what lies without. Then the cramps in my legs remind me why I have fought so hard to escape. Light and shadow are now part of me. Perhaps there's more. Another sense touches me. Through that tiny hole, my lungs fill for the first time. A thousand unidentifiable odors trickle in. The beauty in those smells intrigue me. Some seem familiar, yet that can't be right. Battling fatigue. I whittle away and peck at the opening. One final push and the wall bursts open. I flop exhausted, limbs stretched and free for the first time. It's the most wonderful feeling. Shadows, sounds, and aromas fill my senses. I want to explore, learn, but sleep overtakes me. A loud screech and soft buzzing pull me from out of slumber. Something compels me to sit up. It's an effort to keep my head upright and it wobbles as I open my mouth and add my cry to the other. I'm rewarded with a sweet liquid that rolls over my tongue and down my gullet. The source of this nourishment vanishes, but its identity is clear. Mother. Her scent, her soft feathers, even the sound of her beating wings is forever imprinted. The creature beside me? Sister. They are family. But even now, I know that I am and always will be different. Day three. This new world grows larger when my eyes open. Colors coat every surface, green, brown, blue, Warmth envelops me and light shines from a yellow spot in the sky, too bright to gaze at. Nestled close, sister jostles for attention. Soft down cuts us, coats us both. It's dull and blends with our nest. I swallow my meal and watch as mother feeds sister. I want feathers like mother. Her soft gray-white chest coloring makes the metallic green that covers her back and head more brilliant. Unbidden images flood my mind. Strange, featherless, wingless things. Mother? Father? How can this be? They look nothing like me. Their non-feather coverings change colors. Blue, green, red, even strangely patterned. The sight makes my chest constrict. When I begin to cry, the, the beakless creatures emit soothing sounds and stroke my head. I'm back in our nest, restless, 
unable to sit still. Sister is unhappy with my sudden need to preen her. A sharp chirp halts my attentions. Without the distraction, I'm forced to reflect on what I saw. Beyond the strangeness of the vision, a feeling emerges, a warmth that has nothing to do with temperature. Mother provides food. Sister, warmth. But this new thing is much more. It fills something I didn't know I lacked. Perhaps it's a membrane. If so, not mine. Day 10 Days pass with the monotony of food and sleep, broken only by more visions. Strange square nests with more featherless creatures that swarm in and around them, riding inside metal boxes and eating food that isn't liquid. Questions swirl across my mind. What are they? Where are they? And why do I keep seeing them? I don't understand. But mother has no answers. Sister has no answers. Eat, grow, and fly are their only thoughts. Such an unfulfilling goal. I want to know. I want to see. The other mother wraps her wings, no, arms around me. Comfort, love, I yearn for these things, relish their visits. Day 14. Down gives way to half-formed feathers. Our bodies bulge over the edges of the tiny nest. Every movement threatens to dislodge one of us into the unknown. Mother comes and goes, bringing an endless flurry of meals. Her wings beat too quickly to see, only a blur as she dashes in and out of the nest, creating a tranquil rhythm throughout our day. Dark clouds roll in, and the calmness around us flees. Raging winds nearly knock our nest from its perch. Blood pulses through my veins. Even mother is unsettled as she attempts to shield us from the pelting drops of water. Afraid yet curious, I peek out from beneath her, just as lightning strikes a tree. It's so close, I feel the feathers on my back tingle with electricity. A loud boom leaves me deafened. I'm hurled into another vision. My other family huddles. The ground, usually firm beneath my feet, writhes. We're surrounded by fire. Mother and father fall, then disappear under crumbling rock. Gone forever. All around I see shattered homes, surrounded by the dead and dying. Dark clouds fill the sky, and the air comes out in puffs when I breathe. The nurturing I'd grown to depend on vanishes. All that's left is endless hunger and pain. An empty ache fills me, cries to bring my other family back go unanswered. I beg mother to help, but she doesn't understand. Sister sits beside me in the nest, but I am alone. Her annoyed nudges wake me from more bad dreams. Then a dark-haired girl stops the pain, soothes the emptiness. We're connected in a way I don't fully understand. For now, it's all I need. The images I see are no longer frightening. I hope you enjoyed this reading. You can read the rest of Hummingbird and purchase my other books at the Marriott House on October 9th or on Amazon. Visit the BookFest website or Instagram for more information. My website is alkaplanauthor.com. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just look for A.L. Kaplan Author. On Wednesday, October 6th, I'll be doing a live video workshop on world building. Follow the link on the Right Woman Book Fest website. Don't forget to visit the bookstore. You can find copies of Hummingbird and Star Touched and Wolf Dawn there. Hope you had a great time. See you soon.